This is In Touch with Terry, a power-packed podcast for the medical aesthetics industry. I just discovered your podcast, and I feel like I've hit a gold mine. This is someone who's got a lot of knowledge. She's been there, done that. Terry Ross is a former Fortune 500 executive, international speaker, founder and co-CEO of Apex Platform, and Terry Ross Consulting. Just listening to her energy and her passion and just how hardcore she is. Her knowledge of the industry and just her connections in general are phenomenal. In Touch with Terry will bring you solutions to increase operational and employee efficiency and practice profitability. Plus, features some of the top industry experts as guests. The Apex team literally changed the game for us. Terry, your courses and your podcast are just so helpful. She made me feel like I could do this. Three, two, one. Here we go! Now, here's Terry. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of In Touch with Terry. I'm always so excited to do this podcast because this is for you guys. I know I say it all the time, but I really want to stress that and preface that in the beginning of this podcast. And I really felt a strong desire and passion to have somebody that I consider a dear, dear friend of mine. She is a boss babe in the aesthetic industry. Julie Akaragi is, again, one of the most beautiful women I know. She is the founder and the medical director of Pure Medical Spa in Idaho with three locations. And I'm really just excited for you to hear her story, her journey, her ability to kind of rise above what's happening in the aesthetic space today. But it's about her scaling three businesses, her working with us and why. So I really do want you to get ready for some pearls and some wisdom from Julie. So Julie, honey, thank you so much for being with me today. No, oh, thank you, Terry, for having me. It's it's my honor to be with you today. Thank you. Well, listen, I really want to give Julie the credentials that she deserves. She has been an RN, a nurse anesthetist, actually, since 1996. Julie not only just has her degree in nursing, but her master's in anesthesia from the University of Texas Health Sciences. And she was an Army veteran for 10 years. I didn't even know this about Julie. <laughs> and then you look at her beautifulness, and I'm like, wait a minute, what? Really? She established Pure Medical Spa in 2008 with three locations. We'll get into that in Sun Valley, Coeur d'Alene, and in Idaho. She is a nationally renowned aesthetic cosmetic injector. She's the number one sculptor injector in Idaho. She is a national trainer for gain. Her business has grown exponentially, obviously, for her to have five locations. So, Julie, what the hell have you not done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that enough? It's enough. I think it's enough. No, thank you. Thank you, Terry. Yes, I started in anesthesia. I practiced anesthesia for 23 years. And how I got started in the med spa industry really was very organic. I went to go get a facial myself. And I the, the person giving me a facial was a retired nurse from the hospital I was working at. And she said, you know, I want to get into doing some cosmetic injectables, but I need a medical director. Would you be interested? And I was like, Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I, you know, I'm, mm. I'm familiar with needles. I've done anesthesia for a long time, but I didn't know anything about the cosmetic aesthetic industry. And so I said, you know what, let me just go to a couple trainings and get a feel for it and let me get back to you. Well, lo and behold, I finished a few trainings, absolutely fell in love with it and said, what the heck? Currently, I was doing working one week at the hospital. I had one week on and one week off. I was on call 24 hours a day and then I had a whole week off. I thought, yeah, I can open up a med spa. That's how the first one started. In the low point of the economy in September 2008, I decided to open a business. <laughs> oh, my God. Tell us a little bit more about that. I mean, I love the story because I think that, and I'm sure you can attest to it being in it for so long now. And, you know, we've had been blessed to open up over 100 practices across the country. But it is a lot of stories like yours, where you're super talented, highly skilled, both in your educational experience. And then you're like, I'm going to go learn what this thing's all about. And I'm going to go try to do it. What was trying to go do it and open up your first location? Yeah, I, you know, I've never considered myself an entrepreneur at all. This was just about somebody wanting me to be their medical director. But the one thing I do know about myself is that if, if I choose to do something, I'm all in. I'm 110%. I'm just like you, Terry. Yeah. I knew that if I was going to do it, I was going to do it right. And I'll never forget, 
I literally went to every training across the United States because I opened my business in a really, really my small hometown of Mountain Home, Idaho. And I knew if I did a good job, it would spread fast. But if I did a bad job, it would spread like wildfire. (laughs) And so I didn't touch a patient probably for nine months. I went to all these different trainings. And finally, I was like, okay, I just got to jump in. I got to do this. And so I just started in the back of a hair salon and had one room. And then over time, it grew. A few years later, I was going on vacation in Sun Valley. Mm -hmm. And one of my girlfriends owned a hair salon there. And she said, you know, I've got a lot of people that would want to be treated by you. Would you be interested in coming by for a couple hours on your vacation? (laughs) I was like, sure. That turned into me going literally once a month, then twice a month, then three times a month. And that was in 2015, 2018. One of my clients who was an RN said, have you ever thought about bringing everything you have in Boise to the Sun Valley area? And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I guess we can do this. And we built out a space there. And it was just her and I. We didn't even have a front desk person. It was just her and I. Clients would sit out by themselves in the lobby. We'd come and check our clients in and out. And then the third one, I wasn't looking for a third one. I went to the Northern Idaho to the Coeur d'Alene area to do a training. And my first mentor, person I went to my very first training with, she had a very successful business in Coeur d'Alene. And I told her I was in town and we went to lunch. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, I've decided I'm going to retire and I, I want to turn my business over to somebody who will care for my clients the way I did. And I was like, oh, no. There is no way, because we're talking a 10-hour drive. It's not like I can just go down the road. I got to fly there. (laughs) I got to fly there. So she stayed on me for about six months. And she said, I just want to make you a deal that that you can't refuse. She goes, come up and meet the team. So Mm -hmm. I went up and met the team. And lo and behold, there became location number three. And that was three years ago. And so it wasn't something I was looking for. I have become an entrepreneur and I run and operate three business locations. I want to pick apart all of that that you just shared with us. Thank you so much. And again, so impressive. But your journey into where you are now, right? Again, it started off, you're bootstrapping, you're trying to figure it out. This is not cheap, by the way. So I want to take this from a perspective, um, several things. You know, a lot of people think it's very simple right? To get into the space. I'm going to get a brick and mortar and I'm going to go buy some equipment and I'm going to get trained on injectables and the people will come, right? Mm -hmm. Without Mm -hmm. knowing really what it takes from the business perspective of running a medical spa, medical aesthetic location. Because you are a badass and I I can say it. We've known each other how long now, Julie? Gosh. Three plus years. Yeah. Yeah. Three plus years. I've been to your locations. I've trained your team. But If you were to take it all back or do it all differently, what would that look like now that you have invested so much time and money and it right in yourself, in Mm -hmm. your clinical skills, in your business skills to create the environment and the team that you have? What would you tell people listening that are trying to bootstrap it or think it's super simple without maybe knowing the business side of it? Good question. I think knowing what I know now, I cannot believe I ran a business for 10 years and it ever survived, let alone try to grow to three. I often say, and, and you know, I talk amongst my other colleagues who are provider slash business owners themselves. That's a unique thing to do. A lot of very successful med spas are operated by people with business degrees. They're not people that have a medical degree in some sort, whether that be you know a doctor or a nurse practitioner or an NP, anybody trying to be the provider and the business owner. It's so difficult. It's very difficult. And I literally feel like I could write a book on what not to do. All the mistakes that I made over the years, learning what it takes to run the business. Really what I've learned, what I wish I did then that I know now is to really believe in having a consultant along by your side to help you run the business part of it. As my businesses have grown, I've definitely had to actually get myself out of the treatment room in order to be a successful business owner. And Terry, that was so emotionally hard because I felt like, oh my gosh, are my clients going to think I abandoned them? Are my clients going to leave because it's not me treating them? Will they trust the providers that I'm entrusting their care to. But I knew 
my business was not going to be successful unless I got myself out of the treatment room. So I used to see clients four days a week. And now I see clients one day a month in each of the locations. I still physically am at each location. Yeah. I have to get on an airplane every month, fly up to Spokane, drive over to Coeur d'Alene because I need to be there with my team yeah. and I need to be the leader. But that was hard. I learned that from great consultants like yourself that told me, Julie, in order for you to grow this business, you cannot be the primary provider. And I've developed an apprenticeship program that I'm still developing that is allowing my providers literally for me to say, okay, I'm going to take my knowledge and put it in your head. And now you're going to treat our clients, my, my old clients, yeah. way better than I probably ever could have. But it's building that trust in our clients and building out an apprenticeship program where you are certain that your clients are still getting the same care as you provided to them. I love that. And, you know, look, not everybody's going to be in that position or have the luxury that you did. But when you were starting out and taking these courses to be this amazing injector, and then your business now, I mean, you you guys provide, you know, a wide variety, a very comprehensive business unit. But when you were thinking about hiring team and your systems and your software and your training, and then again, you're the breadwinner trying to make right, bring in all the revenue, seeing all the patients. How did you decide how you were going to do some of these things? And I'm, I'm, I'm also asking because you've now been our client too. Mm-hmm. And we'll kind of get into, you know, you, you've said, you know, mentioned working with outside people. Mm-hmm. But when you're coaching other business owners, and I know you run a group, right? You're part of these groups. You're part of this Galderma training. And I know many people face these same challenges. When you decided to kind of step away other than feeling like your patients wouldn't go someplace else, how did you plan to devote yourself just to the business? And where were you like, oh God, I'm really good at this, but I don't know these things. I think that in that instance, when you are, you're not physically at each location, you have to rely on really good managers at each location. Those managers require training as well. And I know that that was a piece I was missing before I started working with you. I'll never forget when I very first met you. <laughs> I was at Am Spa and I'm going from class to class and the double doors are open to some big conference room that this little dynamo of a woman is standing on the stage and literally the room is packed. It wasn't the classroom that I was going to, but I had to walk through the doors because I was like, why are all those people in there? <laughs> and there you are on the stage, commanding the stage, And I am a firm believer that there are multiple people out there that know way more about running my business than I do. And the day that I have a desire to stop learning, my business will fail. And there was a whole entire room full of people there to learn from you. I had to go in there. I was drawn to go in there to learn what they were learning. And you were talking about Apex. And at the end of it, I was going to walk up and introduce myself to you because I had to know you. And what I found over the months that followed that was your team started working with me and not just me, but started working with every person in my business. Mm -hmm. And then fast forward about a year and a half later, and I bring you out to our team retreat where I get all three locations together And when we do training, and we dedicated that training to your sales training. And most people would think, oh, a sales training is just be to my providers. It wasn't. Your training literally spoke to every single person in my business organization. You taught my guest concierge. They are the people that first pick up the phone when a client calls. That first impression is everything. And then we move on to our guest relations specialists. They're our directors of first impressions. That client walks in the door. They're the first person they see, the last person they see when they leave. And their training is pivotal. And then the providers. And we did all of our consultation training, which is now like this five-star luxury experience. And before I met you, I thought we had those things figured out. And now I know, my gosh, how much we've learned in the last couple of years. And we've taken those pieces and we've implemented them to grow this business even more. First of all, from my humble heart, I am truly honored, again, to call you such a dear friend, to be in your presence and to work with just an equally strong woman who 
has a desire and a passion for constant learning and education. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what's so fascinating. And it really does attribute to your success. You know, I remember being there with you and we're having a drink and then, you know, uh, you know, Steve, you're, you're, you know, your fiance, your husband, <laughs> he's mm-hmm. like, what the hell? Like you're, you're constantly working on the weekends and 24 seven and all these locations. And, you know, we think about your roller coaster, but you devote I mean, you're, you're a mother, you have three sons. I mean, you also have a personal life, but you have truly devoted your ability to say, I'm not above education. Mm-hmm. I'm not above being a, a clinical provider that thinks they know it all. And I think that when we were kind of thinking about the business of aesthetics, again, you were willing to kind of be vulnerable you know, speak up. So thank you for stopping in my room, honey. Yes. I have pictures of you and I together back in the day. Yes. So that's so mm-hmm. amazing. Now having three locations, I'm sure private equity is knocking down your door because consolidation is really big right now. Mm-hmm. And you've invested a lot into not just your team. I know you've went through a rough patch in your compensation model. Mm-hmm. I want to touch upon that for a little bit because you have a very large staff. How many people do you have? In the last couple of years, it's ranged anywhere from 20 at its lowest to 32 at its highest. A lot to manage, you know. I want to touch upon compensation. You have a very large team. You have providers, guest relations, concierge. That is one area that can make or break a business, right? Payroll, mm-hmm. right, is, is way too high. Revenue isn't being generated. You went through a heavy lift with us right? Mm -hmm. To ensure your compensation got right. Talk a little bit about that because I think many people in your shoes um, struggle with that and they're scared to do the right thing, the legal thing and make the change because they're willing to just keep what they have versus looking at the bigger picture. I think you have earned the respect for people to really listen to what you have to say in terms of what that experience was for you and what that outcome was more importantly. When I went to the medical spa show that year, So we were just coming out of COVID and, you know, things were great. And when things are great, you don't realize you have a flaw in your compensation model because when the income is there, I hadn't been taught yet really, really how to scrub my profit and loss. And that's what I started to learn when I started to work with your team and I started working with Skytel to really look at scrubbing this. And I realized as we went into 2023, oh my gosh, this income is not here the way it was before. And there is a flaw in the way I'm compensating my people. Now, I'll tell you now that you I literally have you cut my right arm off to not go through <laughs> the pain that I went through again. But I am so happy where I'm at today. So, you know, in looking at the compensation model, I was like, there, there's a major flaw here. And I reached out and worked so closely with Christy Perry from your team. Bless her heart. Oh, my God. She's just like the most incredible woman ever. (laughs) And she worked with me, I'm telling you, until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning sometime, trying to come up with a compensation plan that was not only fair and equitable to the employees, but that was sustainable for the business. And she taught me, and you taught me so many things about key aspects that need to be part of every compensation plan and that you're paying on net and you're not paying on gross, how to involve your team members in knowing where they're at on a daily basis towards their goals so that they're getting a fair and equitable compensation. We implemented something in March of 2023. Mm -hmm. And by the first month in, I was like, oh my gosh, this is not working as intended. And that's when I came back to Christy. I was like, Christy, something's not working here. Let's dig in. Let's pull it apart. I need benchmarks. We're not hitting the benchmarks. And at that point in time, she just tore it all apart, built it back up. And then we implemented what we call version three. So we had the old version one, we did version two, and then worked. And in July 1st, we moved out version three. And I can tell you that there, you know, there's a benchmark of what your cost of labor should be. And every single month since we have implemented this compensation, we are at or below that benchmark. And I never could have done it without Christy. And the thing is, is that my providers are driven by their goals. They have yeah. tiered goals and they're in it. Christy built them a goal tracker that they do oh, every single day. They are putting in their sales. They know, am I under, am I over? Most all my providers now are hitting tier three, which is a oh ceiling bonus. 
And they're making more than they have. The business is making more. And I tell you, it was painful. It was extremely painful. But we are on a path now that that part of the business is absolutely stable. That was like a very big sigh of just so much love and gratitude. I want that to hit home, you guys. I really want you to kind of rewind and play that piece back for a minute because there's probably not a day that goes by that our team, myself, doesn't get calls about how do I compensate? I can be on stage speaking and it's, I get asked the question. And look, we might know the answer, me, Christy, and the team, and I could probably spit things out. But what I say is, you know, what can your business afford to pay? Mm -hmm. And I love Julie. Thank you one for sharing. I know it was a bitch and not an easy (laughs) thing to go through. Julie, not an easy thing to go through. We'll probably have many nights of bottles of wine, (laughs) but I want to give you the respect and the accolades that as a business owner and as an entrepreneur, you didn't turn a blind eye. You weren't accepting mediocrity. You weren't willing to say, you know what? F it, you know, I'm going to look at this shitty PL. You did the hard work. And it is that hard shit right now that I think our team faces every day. And it's sad. I mean, there's tears in our eyes when people are facing these challenges, but they're not willing. They want to do something about it. They know they need to, but they're not willing to put in the hard work. And the fact that you dove in to, you know, a, 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 you know an ocean of sharks. But Mm -hmm. I want you guys to listen to what Julie said. Now her team's making more money. They're involved. They're invested, right? They're present. Their productivity is higher. She's being transparent with them. And congratulations on that. Thank you. You are so welcome and so (laughs) deserving. And I I hope we're going to celebrate when I see you next. All right, Julie. So let's move on to scaling your businesses, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have three Tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, people want to have you know second and third locations. It's a struggle to do yeah. that. Tell us about the second one. I know you said the third one wasn't intended. What does it require <laughs> to open another location and then a third? You know, the second, I wasn't expecting it at all. What happened is I was going going to that location, um, you know, once, twice, three times a month. I rented a small room in, in the basement of this facility and it was just myself. So I had no team. Yeah. It was, you know, I would see every client. That was that was it. I didn't need a reception area or anything. And it was in 2018 that I told you one of my clients came to me and she said, you know, I would love, I have an aesthetics background. I'd love to do this with you. Would you consider bringing everything that you have in Boise here? There was space in the building that I was in on the main floor and we built it out and um, like I said, we didn't have a front desk person for a long time. It grew, it grew over time. Yeah. Um, and then we hired another provider. Then we had, you know, obviously had a front desk person by that time. And I would go two times a month to that location. And I was there seeing clients four days a week. When the third location opened, that is when everything changed. I think going from one to two is manageable for most people that are pretty organized and have some good people managing their businesses. But when we went from two to three, that's when everything changed for me. And that was when I started realizing I need help. I had worked with consultants for 15 years and really had learned a lot, but I knew that I had needed a better practice management software. I needed somebody to help me with my finances I needed to hire an outside CFO. I mean, I was still paying all the bills myself. I never even looked at a profit and loss statement (laughs) until like three years ago. And I've been doing this for 15 years now. I have no idea how my businesses didn't fail before. But what I can tell you is when I went from two to three, that was a game changer. And I knew that in order for us to continue to be successful, I had to have good management in each location. I had to have a marketing team that was in-house and going to be able to do all the marketing for three locations, in addition to hiring an external marketing team. So we have internal marketing and external marketing and just having somebody to guide me along the way because I didn't learn how to be a business owner in nursing school or anesthesia school. I didn't learn one thing about business. I have learned from the school of hard knocks and I've learned (laughs) along the way what not to do. And a few times, I guess I've learned the right things to do that have led to my success, but I couldn't have got here without the consultants in my life for sure. You know, you kind of said to me, you would hit rock bottom right at one point in time, and you really needed to kind of right shift some things in your businesses. And you invested a lot of money in a lot of things that you needed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want you to tell the story, not me. 
But I want to preface that because a lot of times we hear clients come to us, they fill out a discovery questionnaire, right? They have these problems that they want to fix. We know we solved these nine fundamental gaps in the market today. But then people will say like, well, Terry, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I'm going to wait on you or I'm going to wait on Apex because I need to get this marketing thing or this new software or this new piece of equipment. It's not a one or the other. And so do you mind sharing kind of when you felt like you were at some low point mm-hmm. and just all the things that you did at one time, by the way, because I think mm-hmm. you have a pretty astounding story. So I can think of two separate points in my 15 years of doing this business where, I mean, I literally liken it to being on a roller coaster at times. I mean, there, there are times when your hands are in the air and you have the greatest people around you and things are going great and you're smiling and you're screaming and everything's just going perfect. And then you see that there's a big drop coming up and there's a, a corner or things aren't going right and the business starts to control you. And there's two separate times where there were low points. And when I came out of those low points, I had to look back and see why. A, a very vulnerable time to be like, yeah, I failed. I am failing. How do I get out of this? And I had to analyze what had happened. Growing too big too fast. Bigger is not always better. And I mean big in size of a location. We're all at like 2,500 square feet and we think, oh, I just go to 10,000 square feet. It'll all get better. (laughs) You know, that's not necessarily true. Taking on too much debt, you know, listening to every single rep that walks in your door and is trying to sell you the next latest, greatest piece of equipment. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up sitting in the corner for the next five (laughs) years. The other thing I can tell you that I've learned from, and this hurts, is keeping bad employees too long. You may have those employees that are contributing to your top line revenue and they tear down the culture within the organization and you let it go for so long because they're producing so much revenue. And I can tell you, as I look back that you have to have the philosophy of bad apples out because they will ruin and tear down the entire culture. And so looking back at kind of the low points, those were things that I had to come to. I would say the most recent time, a few years ago, you know, the time I met you, I brought in a new practice management software, and that's very disruptive to your entire team. But what I had was not working, and it was painful. It It was so painful. We were trying to deal with that every single day, and then having to realize I needed a CFO, and then realize I wanted to work with a consultant at your level, and there were so many new things to do, and that was hard. It was hard on my team to implement all of that at one time. And I had to keep telling my management team, really, and the whole team, I promise this is it. Once we get this implemented, we'll be done. And I'm happy to say that has happened. <laughs> After we did the compensation change last July, everything has been, there's been no more changes. It was hard. Yeah. Did we lose team members? Yes, we lost team members. And that is hard. It hurts because my team members are truly like my family. And sometimes it just doesn't work for people. Some people want everything to be stable. If you want your business to grow, there does have to be changes, little tiny changes that hopefully most of the team can grasp onto. But there are those that are going to say, nope, this is too disruptive for me. And you have to be okay with that. Again, I feel that there's all these sides because you're giving such pearls of wisdom from what you've lived through yourself. What kind of personality, because you're a strong personality, so am I. You know, that doesn't mean we don't go to bed and cry in our pillow mm-hmm. with a bottle mm-hmm. of wine at night. Right? <laughs> you know, you know, we, we only be so strong on the outside. But you did decide, Julie, to make very, very difficult decisions. As you mentioned, you brought on Apex. You worked with us. I came to train the team. You got new practice management software. You got a CFO. That is a whole lot of shit. Mm-hmm. And you guys, please take in what Julie just said and what I just repeated back. She didn't make one or two changes. She made very significant changes and everybody could have walked out. But What was driving you and motivating you to almost say like, I have nowhere to go, but make these decisions, even if you lost people, because that takes a good leader to recognize what changes need to be made for the greater good. And, you know, in the future where people couldn't see what you could see, you know, before I bring on anything into the organization, I evaluate it thoroughly. So I, I knew that there was going to be something greater, just believe me. And for years and years, so many team members have believed in me. And I have the most incredible team on earth. Oh my God. I'm so blessed. I am incredibly blessed. 
But I ask them from time to time, you have to believe in me. I promise you, I'm not going to bring anything into the organizations that, that's not going to make the organization better, that's not going to make your life better, that's not going to educate you more. I promise, but it may get a little bit harder as we go through it. And I, I think that, that the team now would say, yes, I see the value in that. It wasn't fun. It wasn't fun to, to change practice management software um, and have to relearn and go through all those troubles. But we're at a stable point now with that. We're at a stable point with all the pearls that you, oh my gosh, you, you, you brought to us with our whole consultation process and just our sales processes and every person on the team learning how to overcome objections. We learned a lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah. We're all grateful for it now, but I can tell you there were a lot of nights I cried and I went to bed because I was like, I told them to believe in me and I can't let them down. And I hope nobody feels that I've let them down. And I truly feel that the team is strong. We are strong, yeah. but yeah, you have to go through some hard things to get to be that strong. Well, I think everybody strives to work for someone like yourself who leads by example right? You're not just telling your people what you want them to do, but you're there. And I can attest to her team because again, I had the pleasure that she flew everybody out in this beautiful hotel. And what I enjoyed the most is that you set the expectation. And it's interesting. I've done sales training for many, many, many years. And you know, look, I think it's people can be, be scared of it or think I'm scary. It's super fun, right? It, it was fun. Yeah. But to have your team really feel that they were being invested in right? That you cared about their success and to bring me in and where everybody was fun and embracing, right? Not scared of it. They wanted to make you proud. I remember role playing. You remember that? Yes. Right. You, and you're like, everyone has to do it. Everybody has to do it. Talk to me a little bit about everybody knows my sales training program. I'm passionate about that. I lecture on that. I know you do too. And mm -hmm. I love it so much. We should do something together. How have you ensured in a level of continuity and consistency across your locations, this five-star consultation and customer service? Because I have some of your stats and your business has grown exponentially in sales. And you know, how have you taken that and really executed? Because when I go, I don't know mm -hmm. what happens. To be your friend and to be with, on this journey with you and see the success when other people are scared of it, yeah, I think it's important to share how, how you've been able to adopt it and execute. We have a very unique programs that we've done for years in with our consultations and building out a treatment plan for our clients. When the management team and I started working with you, you took it to a different level. We've been successful for years with our consultations, but through you and your team and Tammy Valletta, bless her heart, mm -hmm. my goodness, her creative <laughs> design, oh my goodness. We worked for probably, I would say, close to nine months as a management team and, and did not tell the rest of the team anything about this because we wanted to unveil it when you came to do yeah. the sales training at our team retreat. And we were so excited around the collateral materials that we had developed. For years, we'd been doing consultations and we would send our client out the door with basically, here's a quote of what it's going to be a down payment and X number for your monthly payments. And it's been successful for us. But it's truly where the rubber meets the road is in the consultation. Getting the client in the door is super important and you trained us how to do that. Treating the client wonderful while they're there is awesome, but you don't make any money if you can't do well in the consultation. And so we developed literally these five-star collateral materials. It developed a process throughout all three of my locations. We are all doing consultations exactly the same way because I can't say that that was the way it was happening before. Mm -hmm. And especially like when you buy another facility, their providers have been doing consultations a certain way for many years. And for me to go in and say, oh no, now I want you to do it this way. Yeah. But until we were able to get those materials together, we have, when our clients come in, this beautifully branded folder that they get to take home with them. They truly feel like they're taking something home with them. Yeah. That inside that folder has everything nuts to bolts of really yeah. our customized treatment plan for them for an entire year. They fill out a cosmetic interest questionnaire when they come in. They may have come in thinking, oh, I want some disport or Botox yeah. for these 11s between my brows. But by them filling out this cosmetic interest questionnaire, 
truly guides our consultation. And it takes that process and allows us to open up a book of providing multiple solutions for every single problem they have identified on their cosmetic interest questionnaire. And with that, we have developed a treatment plan that literally is like a book. We open it up and we check off. We want you to do this, this, and this. We want you to come this often. This is how long you can expect to have downtime. This is the frequency. And then we've developed a year-long blank calendar where we are then taking those treatments and we're writing them out and saying, in January, in May, and October, you're going to come for your disport. This client knows when they leave exactly yeah. what they can expect for the next year. When they have something this beautiful <laughs> on their hands, they're not going to go away from somebody who's cared enough to give them a solution to every problem they have. And to really build that trust in that client, it's what we do. It's what's made it successful is the consultations. And you just took it to a five-star level with everything we learned from you and building this packet. It's just beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And the client walks out with a complete plan from A to Z and a calendar that says, here's all your treatments. This is when you need to have them. And oh, by the way, this is a skincare we recommend to ensure those treatments. And we've checked it off. It's complete. They go home with a plan. And our sales numbers, since you have come, within the first quarter of you coming, our package sales went up by 10% in one quarter. Mm -hmm. And then the amount of items in the treatment plans went up by like over 61%. It was a crazy amount. So they were confident in their ability to recommend solutions to all these problems because we were only recommending something for one or two things. But with a cosmetic interest questionnaire, we now are like, oh, they have 10 problems to address. We're going to give you 10 solutions and we're going to write it out in a plan for you. Preach, sister. Oh my God. Well, one, it makes me so happy, but this is what I say on stage. Look, I can give someone the tools, the training, the resources, the foundation, the how, the who, the what, right? All that. What I can't do is do what you did, right? I was there two and a half days with you guys, loving it up, sucking it up, right? I saw your beautiful treatment plan. You unveiled it to me. I think I had tears in my eyes. It was so <laughs> stunning and so beautiful. But Julie, again, and you guys, the tribe, anyone listening, she is a successful business owner, but she did these massive changes. And really what she said is that she executed, she delivered a promise to a patient. She saw where there was areas of opportunity to grow. She wasn't willing to let her providers not do this. And what I think, Julie, I'm really taking away of what you said too, is that they weren't feeling like a salesperson. Mm -hmm. And I have your stats, if you don't mind me sharing. Mm -hmm. You know, you said that your revenue had increased in that quarter, 20%, package sales up 30, and your overall, ever, all, everything was grown over 61%. And yeah. you guys, if we're looking for a sustainable business model, increased profitability, higher patient retention, stronger patient conversions, that is the way to do it. The way Julie just explained that she's doing it with continuity in all three locations. And that is just hard shit to do. So amen, sister. Thank you so much. Because <laughs> that is well, something thank beautiful you. to share. Thank you for taking um, it to a different level. <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank you for executing. I can't make that happen when I'm not there. All right. We are wrapping it up down to the final hour. What, what advice, Julie, you've given us and the tribe, gosh, so many pearls of wisdom and such vulnerability of, of your experiences two last questions for you. What is your why? And you know, what is your desires in the next couple of years? And then what advice do you have for people that have been in your shoes in one way or the other? They're struggling, they're in a hard place, and or like you said, they're clapping and rah rah and they want to make money. What advice would you give them for continued growth? Mm -hmm. I would say my why has always been about my clients and my team. My clients, to develop a solution to every problem they have, to put it in something that's so simple and so luxurious that they don't want to go anywhere else, the feeling that it gives me to be able to literally change somebody's life and help them to feel wonderful about the way they look and feel. It's always been about that. That feeling that I get when that client walks out or, or when they come in and they're like, oh my gosh, I got 10 compliments on how I look 10 years younger, whatever. And second is the team. Oh my gosh. To watch my team grow professionally. That warms my heart. I am just huge on continuing education. I don't think we can ever stop learning. And to watch my team grow and to embrace all of the continuing education that's offered to them. And then to just look at the books and to look at their 
utilization rates, that they are like 90% utilized on most days. That tells me they're embracing the education that I'm giving them. Yeah. Their clients are trusting them and their clients continue to return year after year after year. Yeah. That's my why. My why is to watch this growth and to see me exit the treatment room and for them to continue to grow and take over. As far as other business owners that are thinking about having multi locations or keeping your team involved, it's about consistency. If you want to do it well in multiple locations, you need to develop methods of consistency. You need to have systems in place. I recently aligned with a learning management system software so that I can literally, well, I'm developing yeah. an apprenticeship and everything goes into a manual. Every single policy, procedure, process goes into this manual. Any team member at any point in time, if they want to look up something on PTO, they just type into the yeah. system PTO. That yeah. portion of our core policy manual will pop up. Oh. They can learn looking at this system, who's the people involved for this process, mm -hmm. who are the tools, and what is the process about. That type of consistency. And then most importantly, setting KPIs for every single team member and what you've always taught me, inspect what you expect. <laughs> um, don't just throw out some goals and never inspect it. Every single person in your organization, your providers, your managers, they need to have goals and you need to monitor those goals. You need to reward them for those goals, you know, with production bonuses. But truly, don't just throw the goal out there. You got to inspect what you expect. I love it. I feel like we're just soul sisters here. Like you're we speaking. <laughs> You're my ride or die. Oh my God, Julie. Thank you. This was, this was such a beautiful podcast. I know it's so long overdue that I've wanted you to be on here to share your journey, to share your story, to share your entrepreneurial success with everybody. Thank you so much. I'm so honored again to call you a friend, to call you a sister, to see your journey of success, honored to know you and work with you. And I hope you guys listening, please. This is Julie Akaragi with the founder and medical director of Pure Med Spa in Idaho. Again, three locations, trainers, she's everywhere. Julie, where can people contact you or find you if they want to reach out? My Instagram handle is beauty by Julie A. And there's a period between there's beauty dot by dot by Julie. <laughs> um, and that's my personal Instagram handle. My email is julie at puremedicalspaidaho.com. I'm more than happy to help anybody along this journey. I've had a lot of help along the way, and I want to give back to everyone. And, and, and Terry, I echo the feelings about you. I mean, I, you not only have become my business consultant, but you've become a very, very dear friend. And I, I can't thank you enough for everything that you've done to help me grow and continue to grow. we got a long road ahead. I'm not retiring. Girl, we got, we got, no, sister, we, we got big things. We got four us next, right? Four yeah. us next. Yes. So Julie, honey, thank you so much for being on this episode of In Touch with Terry. You guys listening, you know, I love your feedback. If you found this valuable, and I know you did, because everybody listening is going to benefit from Julie's uh, wisdom today. I would love for you to like it, share it, uh, send it to people that can benefit from it. And please, as always, leave me a comment as to what you want to hear next and if this was valuable for you. And with that being said, I will see you guys on the next episode of In Touch with Terry. Ciao, guys. Thanks for listening to In Touch with Terry. We invite you to schedule a discovery call with our Apex team. The link to apexplatform.com can be found in the show notes. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of In Touch with Terry.